Some very interesting dynamics are happening right now to the US housing market. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about that because we're gonna talk about asking prices, housing inventory, days in the market, and also price reductions as well. Also, stay tuned towards the end of this video. I'm gonna talk about what's happened overall uh, to our housing market over the past couple of weeks as well. Uh, this is one of my favorite videos I make for you guys each and every week regarding my own analysis of Realtor.com's latest data. And they actually just announced their latest report just posted on September 5th. And I'll leave a link to this article in my video description, but I didn't know, did not even read it. Instead, go to realtor.com slash research slash data, click on weekly inventory, and then click on that link right there. And it takes you more or less to this information. So let's go ahead and dive right in. The most recent stats we have from them is for the week ended August 31st. They look at your viewer changes for asking prices, housing inventory, or the amount of houses for sale, new listings, people listing their houses for sale, and also days in the market and the number of price reductions uh, nationwide. So let's talk about asking prices first. That decreased by 0.9% compared to the same time frame one year ago. Therefore, asking prices have been relatively flat or down compared to the previous year for now for 14 consecutive weeks. We're no longer seeing strong home price growth uh, because inventory is much higher right now than it was one year ago. On top of that, home sales are also relatively low as well. Therefore, home prices and our rates would likely have to decrease further nor see a significant rise in home sales uh, nationwide. I'm saying this because I believe a lot of people are priced out of uh, buying a house or they're just waiting on the sidelines for it to become more affordable uh, to buy a house. So because of these factors, rising inventory and a lack of sales, this is all contributing to the softness in um, home prices uh, in the United States. Okay, let's talk about inventory levels or the amount of houses for sale uh, in the United States. That increased by 34.6% compared to the same time frame in 2023. So inventory has been higher compared to the previous year for 43 consecutive weeks, going all the way back until mid-November last year. That, of course, is good news for home buyers. If you want to buy a house, it's great to see we have more options, right? Uh, giving you more negotiating power because you have more houses for sale, which means that home sellers have to compete against each other more so than when inventory is down greatly. And of course, the markets in which uh, buyers have more negotiating power than um, not, uh, those are areas in which inventory is um, higher today than it was back in 2019. Every market is different. However, I would be doing you a disservice here by saying that um, we're seeing you know, skyrocketing inventory levels because, for example, the year-over-year -year growth rate has been stagnant for nearly four months. It has been important to you guys for about four months now. The year-over-year -year gains have been paid at around 35 to about 38% ever since mid-May this year. I want to share my key takeaways regarding this. So inventory growth has been stagnant from a low amount of houses being listed for sale. So for example, since early May, new listings have been up um, from a year ago by single digits less than 10% uh, for the most part. Uh, prior to that, it was on the rise by more than 10% for two consecutive months. And I'll share that here in a little bit regarding uh, a lack of new supply here in the market. Let's first talk about inventory levels according to my own analysis of AltosResearch.com's latest data. I also have an update regarding um, inventory from Realtor.com because they just posted August's data as well. I'll share how that compares to years past uh, going back to 2016. So right now, at least for the week ended um, August 30th this year, there's 704,000 homes for sale, according to Altos. One year ago, approximately 510,000. So we have approximately 195,000 more homes for sale compared to a year ago. That's an increase of 38% um, from 12 months ago. And that has been paid at around 38% ever since May this year. So in other words, inventory uh, or the growth rate has been relatively flat uh, ever since then. Also, there's approximately 205,000 more homes for sale compared to the start this year. So year to date, we're up by about 205,000. Compare that to the same time frame last year at this time, it was up by only 8%. So in other words, supply is growing much faster this year than it was last year. 
Now here's the big difference, and this is something I actually just added here, uh, because uh, Realtor.com just announced uh, August's data. So inventory levels are also rising much faster compared to pre-COVID. So for example, housing inventory rose on average by 16% from January through August in 2017 through 2019. That's based on data from Realtor.com. Compare that to a gain of around 37% so far this year, January through August. But the increase this year is still much less than 2022. So for example, from January through August of 2022, inventory you know, basically skyrocketed up by 93%. Whereas this year, we're up by 37% during the same time frame. This, my friends, is why I do not expect to see a sharp correction in home prices like we saw in 2022. But home price growth should soften though, due to four main reasons. Number one, the decrease of asking prices of houses being listed for sale. As I share with you guys, for about 14 consecutive weeks, um, asking prices have been relatively flat or down year over year. Number two, of course, we have more houses for sale, more inventory levels. Number three, due to seasonality effects of our housing market, our housing market tends to cool off in the winter months, of course. And of course, sluggish rate of home sales as well. And of course, let's keep an eye on this in the coming months because of course, a lot could change. Um, also to summarize, inventory is not only up by about uh, 38%, according to data from Altos, but it's also rising much faster compared to pre-COVID levels. However, it's not rising nearly as fast as 2022. Again, looking at uh, pre-COVID up by 16%. This year so far, we're up by 37%, but 2022, we're up by a whopping 93%. Some very big changes over the past several years. Um, also, even though we have, you know, what, 38% more homes for sale right now uh, compared to the same time frame last year, we're still down by about 26% from 2019. All right, let's get back to my nerdy analysis of Realtor.com's latest data, because as I mentioned, we're seeing you know stagnation of inventory growth due to the fact we're seeing you know basically stagnation of new listings or new supply in the market. So new listings rose by 5.5% uh, year over year. That marks the second consecutive uh, week in which uh, new listings are up compared to one year ago. But before that, we saw two consecutive weeks in which new supply were down. So for example, four weeks ago, we were down by 0.9%. The week uh, before that, we are at a, a decrease of 0.2%. Also, with the exception of a couple of weeks ever since May this year, new listings have been up by less than 10%. In contrast, they increased by over 10% from February through April. So the spring home buying season, we saw a huge amount of, not a huge amount, it, you know, a significant increase of new supply in the market compared to the same time frame in 2023. But now it's been basically reversed. Uh, we've basically been seeing a low level of new supply in the market ever since really May, as you can see right here. New supply in the market, increasing by less than 10% with the exception of uh, July 13th and June 29th. Before that, we saw double digit gains from February 3rd through April 27th. Therefore, the growth rate of new supply in the market or new listings has stalled, causing stagnant growth rate of housing inventory. Okay, let's change gears slightly here and talk about how fast or how slow houses are selling nationwide. Last week, it took six days longer to sell house compared to 12 months ago. This marks the 17th consecutive week in which houses have been taking longer to sell compared to the previous year. This is drastically different compared to um, October of 2023 through March this year, when homes were selling faster on average compared to the year prior to that. Uh, the impact regarding this is that um, houses are taking longer to sell, and this is helping increase the total amount of houses available for sale or uh, increasing housing inventory. Okay, changing gears slightly again here, let's talk about the increase in the number of price drops nationwide. That rose by 31.9% year over year. So the number of price drops has been higher compared to last year for the past 32 consecutive weeks. However, even though there's more price drops than last year, the gain of 31.9% last week is the smallest year-over-year increase since 
the beginning of March this year. Therefore, big picture, we're seeing basically stagnation growth of uh, inventory levels, new supply in the market, as well as the number of price drops as well. It is worth noting, of course, though, that we still have, what, 35% more homes for sale than last year, and of course, more price drops as well. Now, one thing I do want to share regarding price drops, though, uh, I want to share some more uh, recent trends from OutsourceResearch.com. So for the week of, or week ended, maybe it's not more recent, but uh, different uh, stats here. Uh, for the week ended August 30th, the share of price drops was at 39%. This means that four of every 10 homes for sale nationwide have reduced their asking price. That is higher than last year uh, at 36%. However, though, it's lower than, very slightly, a little bit lower than uh, this time in 2022 when the share was at 40%. Uh, but at 39%, this is way higher compared to 21 at 27%, 2020 at around uh, 25%, and also higher compared to pre-COVID levels back in mid-September uh, 2019 when the share was at 36%. Of course, part of the reason why we're seeing an increase of the share of price drops is this right here. Uh, this is inventory levels. So according to Altos, we're at 704,000. One year ago, again, 510,000. Uh, but at 704,000, this is at least a four year high during the same time frame. In fact, it's actually a four year high for any uh, month uh, going back to at least uh, July of 2020. However, though, we're still way below pre COVID. So, for example, in mid September 2019, there was 953,000 houses for sale. Now there's only 704,000. All right, moving on, I wanna share a summary of today's video because of course, that was a lot of information to cover, right? So number one, um, asking prices have been flat or down year over year for the past 14 consecutive weeks. This is from a significant rise in the number of houses for sale, as well as elevated home prices, which of course is keeping many buyers waiting for prices and or rates to decrease. Number two, housing inventory rose by about 35% last week, but the growth rate has been stagnant for nearly four months, it paid at around 35 to about 30% uh, for about four months. In my opinion, this is from a slowdown in the number of new supply in the market. However, we still have approximately 26% fewer houses for sale compared to the same time frame in 2019. I won't share these stats below because this is only looking at July's numbers. And um, I should have um, numbers from uh, resiclubanalytics.com um, once they post um, August numbers, because I'm guessing that um, a lot of these states, Washington, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, may have more houses for sale uh, this August compared to August of 2019. We already know that as of July, uh, Texas, Idaho, Florida, and Tennessee had more inventory levels from July of 2019. So I'll update that once they uh, update their numbers on their website. Uh, number three, uh, we all know that we, a lot of people have rates uh, far below current levels right now. About 78% of homeowners who do have a loan in their house have a rate or a, a mortgage rate below 5%. So that has been limiting the amount of people listing their house for sale, given that the average 30 year fixed rate at the time of filming this video is in the low 6% range. That of course is keeping house inventory well below 2019's levels. Uh, new supply in the market has been uh, rising by less than 10% since May, which of course is limiting the growth rate of inventory. I do not expect to see a giant surge of people listing their house for sale uh, really due to two main reasons, and that is because of uh, you know the elevated rates we have right now, but of course also due to seasonality, maybe three reasons, um, but also because uh, we're not seeing a lot of forced selling right now because unemployment is still remaining uh, very low, historically speaking. However, if unemployment starts spiking though, people start losing their jobs, of course that will cause more people uh, who are being forced to sell their houses. Um, as well. Number four, the share of price reductions is no longer a five-year high. As I explained to you guys, uh, it's actually a little bit below 2022's levels, but much higher compared to 2019. Um, also, in a span of six months in 2022, the share of price shops skyrocketed from 17% to 40%, more than doubling uh, in the span of six months. Compare that to this year, 
the trough was at 30%. Now it has increased to 39%. So a small gain of around 9 percentage points uh, compared to more than doubling in 2022. Number five, last week, houses on average took six days longer to sell from last year. Also, houses have been uh, taking longer to sell uh, for the past 17 consecutive weeks. Of course, before that, houses were selling faster compared to the same time frame in 2023. As houses have been taking longer to sell, this, of course, is contributing to the rise of inventory. But wait, there's more. Number one, average 30-year fixed rates are sitting very close to a one and a half year low. Housing affordability has improved, but it's still a big issue uh, due to near record high home prices. Uh, this can be seen by the record level of, uh, low level, I should say, of pending home sales this July. Uh, that was posted from the National Association of Realtors. They recorded or posted that we have a record low level of contracts being signed between buyers and sellers. And their data, by the way, goes back through 2001, I believe. So the amount of contracts being signed between buyers and sellers is lower today than it was back in 2008. Absolutely mind blowing. Number two, the most recent stats we have showing mortgage purchase applications, those decreased by 4% uh, for the week ended August 30th. That's according to data from the MBA. But based on my own analysis of their data, that's the smallest year of year decrease since the week ended November 19th of 2021. In other words, that's the smallest year of year decrease in nearly three years. So big picture, the amount of people who are submitting applications to buy houses using loans is still at relatively low levels. It's not a you know, 30 year low, it's on par with levels we saw back in 1995, but it's not the lowest levels over the past 12 uh, months. But what we do see right now is a low level of application numbers and therefore a low level of, uh, uh, of difference compared to one year ago. But we're not seeing the giant decrease in applications like we saw in late 2022 or early 2023 where we saw a decrease of applications in the range of 20 to about 40%. Now it's down by only 4%. So a small decrease of a small amount of applications. That makes sense. Um, let's move on. Uh, the National Association of Realtors, or NER, reported that pending home sales of existing houses in July uh, fell to a new all-time record low, as I share with you guys. In contrast, new home construction sales, a measure of contracts being signed between builders and home buyers, actually increased by 6% this July, the highest rate of new home sales since May of 2023. This dichotomy of our housing market where builders um, have an advantage uh, right now because they can offer all these incentives, a much lower rate, um, also offering free builder upgrades, uh, et cetera. So that caused um, sales to increase in July, yet the resale market of existing houses fell to a new all-time record low. Home builders, though, are still facing headwinds because there still has a glut of houses for sale. Uh, so for example, the amount of new houses for sale is basically on par right now with 2008 levels. Number three, looking forward for the nation as a whole, asking prices are down, inventory has been increasing, homes are sitting on the market longer and price reductions are more common now than it was back in 2019. We are moving towards a buyer's market, but we're not there yet for the nation as a whole. Plus, every house market is different. Inventory in California and the northeast part of uh, the United States is down greatly from 2019. In contrast, inventory is piling up in Texas, Idaho, Florida, and Tennessee. Number four, the most important one, please like and subscribe. I appreciate you guys so much. Have an amazing day and look forward to seeing you on the next video.